All right, so what we have here is a sniper, a pump sniper, that the rear frame screw, where it threads into the body has been stripped. So the threading on the screw itself is still good, now it's in there, but when you put it in, it will not tighten anymore. It will just constantly spin around and around and around and around. You can't tighten it up. So we are going to re-thread the body. And we're gonna use something called a helicoil. You can find other brands and other formats of this, but helicoil is what we're gonna use right here. So the first thing we wanna do is just get everything off the body to make it easier. So we're gonna remove the frame And we're gonna to get to the internals first. All right, so that comes off of there. We really don't need to take any of this off. We could if we wanted to, but we don't need to. So we're just gonna work with it as we see right here. Um, we're gonna pull bolt out, put that over there. We're going to, we have to adjust our lug. So our lug is right here. No. We want to remove the hammer, the spring, and the back cap out of the gun. So we're going to pull the back out of here. Pull the spring out. We're going to adjust our lug to the point where we can slide the hammer out. And now this right here is the screw. This is, you can actually see inside there. Maybe you can't, I don't know, where the threading is just non-existent anymore. The threads in this front one are still good, but the threads back here, there's nothing to grip onto for the screw anymore. So we're going to take a little bit of like a paper towel or something that you have and we are going to push it up inside of here. I'm just gonna push it up in here because when we're working in this, we're gonna create a bunch of metal shavings and we don't want those metal shavings to get up into this section. So we're just gonna basically make a plug or a cork for the front. Like that. Therefore, where we're working right here, all our shavings stay in this little area and then we can dump them out and be done with it. Now, in our helicoil set, you're going to have a drill bit like this, a tap, and then your helicoil inserts. We're gonna use the smallest one. It looks like I'm down to my last insert. Now these are stainless steel inserts. So once we put this helicoil in, it will actually be much stronger than the original aluminum was, which is a good thing. And then we've got our our, um, our rod that helps put it in. One thing I will tell you about the tap right here, this tap is specifically for inserts. On the side of the tap, it will say um, the size of the screw that we will eventually be using. So this is an 832 tap, because this is an 832 screw but it also says um, SS, STI, yeah, it says STI on it right there, which is steel thread insert. Now, if you had a normal tap, like this one right here, which was an 832 tap, and you tried and you tapped something, you could put an 832 screw in with this one. If you took this one and put it into something, you could not put an 832 screw into this. The reason being is this is bigger so that it allows this insert to go in and then an 832 screw goes through this. So if you find a tap that says 832 but also says STI on it, do not use it as a normal tap, it will not work. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our drill bit right here and our drill and probably the scariest part of this whole thing is we're going to drill into our body. 
which I know not many people want to do. But we got stuff. Basically what we're doing is just clearing out all the old threading that could be inside of here. The bit wasn't tight enough. A little bit harder when you're wearing gloves. We just want to go through there. We don't want to go through and hit the bottom because our threading for our IVG or our velocity adjuster is in the back there. So you just have to be careful that you don't just jam it down through there and smash it into the bottom. That's it. It shouldn't take a lot of force or work or anything because most of the threads are already gone and the bit we're using is not taking a ton of material away. It's just taking those threads out. And that's it for our for drilling out the threads put that in there now we're gonna use our tap put our other tap back there so it doesn't get confused now just putting this into a T handle so it'll be easier to turn I am gonna use a little bit of oil on here just so it doesn't bind up or anything. And again, we're not making huge thread changes in here. We're just making room. And we're gonna come in straight from the top. Now, it is important that we go in straight up and down and uh, horizontally up and down. So on our X axis and our Y axis, we gotta make sure that we are dead center on the top. So I'm going to start going in with this, and as I go in, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to look from the sides to make sure that I am vertically going in. And I'm going to make slight adjustments at the beginning to make sure that I'm in the right spot. Once I get it in there, I can't change it. So as I'm going, at the beginning when just the tip of the, the, uh, the, the tap is going through, I can adjust where it's gonna sit without causing any damage. But once it gets through there, that's it. You're stuck with where you're at. And as I go down, I'll go a little bit of a turn, then I'll back it up a little bit. I'm just trying to clean out the shavings that are in there. And then again, once we get in there, we want to make sure that we run the tap through so that it's making good threads. But again, don't go all the way to the bottom to where it smashes into the bottom. You can see the tap turning around in there. We want to go to where the meat of it is through, and then we can back it right out again. And then as we're moving this around, we want to make sure we don't put force on it left or right. We don't want to damage those threads that we've just created in there. All right. I'm not really worried about the shavings that are in here at the moment. We'll clean all that stuff out in a minute. But you can see there are nice brand new threads in here now. But these are the wrong threads, obviously. If we tried to take our 832 and put it in there, it just drops right in. Doesn't even grab on or anything like that. <laughs> so now we're going to take our insert. We're going to put our insert into our new home. So look, my glove's got a hole in it. That's fun. So at the bottom of our helicoil piece, you can see there's a little lip on it right there in our installing tool the end has a little lip on it as well so when we put this in we thread this in here you'll see that it'll get to a point where the lip on the tool pushes against that little tang that's right there and this is what helps force and turn the helicoil piece down in 
It's what gives us our pressure to turn this thing down in there. So let's go ahead and put it in there. All right. I'm going to remove this one. Here. All right. Now, some of you might know or have done this before. There is a plastic block that you can get on these that you thread the helicoil insert into. For some reason, my block is gone. I don't know where it is. Normally, I would be using that, and it pre spreads the spacing on the insert, and it does make it a little bit easier to put in but you still can do it this way and that's kind of where we're at right now. So now we're going to thread our insert into its new home. And you can see it's going down in there. Now we want to make sure that the top thread or the top of the insert is below the level of the um, lip or the wherever the screw is going. It doesn't want it, you don't want it to stick out. You want to make sure that it gets into the crevice. Otherwise, when you try to feed the screw in, it won't have a starting position because that piece is sticking up out of the top and it won't be in the right spot. Now I'm also looking on the inside of the hole. If I used one of the longer inserts like this one, as I'm screwing this down in, the bottom might stick out of down here, which I don't want because then pieces can't move back and forth in there and I can't cut it off. I would have to, before I tried to put this in, I would have to cut this down to a different size, um, which is not the best thing that you want to do because then you can leave burrs on it and things. You want to use the the coil that's the right size for what you're doing um, and then uh, put it in so right now I don't see it sticking out so it's in the right spot I want to make sure that it picks up the threads and goes in and it does perfect now I can't thread this all the way in because remember at the bottom of the insert there's that little tang that's on there. And we have to knock that off of there. Um, this piece right here is used to, you just put it in there and you tap it and it breaks that tang off of there. So at this point, I could possibly still get this coil out. If I kept rotating it down, it would thread through the other side and come out. But as soon as I put this in here and I hit it and I break that tang off of there, there is no way that that coil is coming out of there. So if you are not 100% absolute about where this is right now, do not break that tang off of there. Once you are sure that it is in the right spot, that it does not obstruct the movement of any of your pieces, everything goes through there as it should, then you can break it off. But do not do it early or you will be in for a world of problems. We'll put our piece in there, tap it real quick, and then our piece falls out right there. It breaks off, it's supposed to, and then that allows our screw to now thread in, and it will never go bad again. The insert will not go bad. If anything, you'll, you'll strip out the screw, but you'll never ruin that insert. Well, I probably shouldn't say never, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some instances where somebody has ruined that, but let's put this back together real quick. And these helicoil sets, you can find them all over. The, you can get them any place. Uh, McMaster car, you can find them at, at all sorts of spots. And they come in all sorts of different like sizes and configurations, things like that. All right, so that's in the front. Nice and tight. Put this one in the back. Threads in and then, oh yeah. 
couldn't do that before. And that's it. That's how you heal a coil. And, and, and the process is the same for whatever it happens to be. But if you need to fix a screw that is stripped out, get a Gila coil set, put it in there, and basically re-thread your whatever and um, make it good again. It's not ruined if it's stripped. You can fix it. Hopefully this helps some people out there. I'll see you in the next video.